Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my sewing room, also known as my happy place. And today is episode number 37 in the Sew Your Stash series. And you know, we are talking all about squares again. And so I'm hoping, you know, I'm continuing my hope of trying to inspire you to sew with your leftover squares. And um, this is the tulip block that we'll be doing right here. And this is the size that's in the book. Speaking of the book, this is uh, my book, Scrappiness is Happiness, where all of my scrappy quilts that I have done, well, not all of them, but most of my scrappy blocks that I did in the last couple of years on this channel ended up in this book in my Sew Your Stash series. And the ones that I did not film are, I'm filming now, so this is one of them. And I'm filming as we go week to week in the Scrappiness is Happiness quilt along. Okay, we're doing a sampler quilt. So there's 32 blocks in the book and we are doing a sampler quilt. And you can get this free PDF download. And I have the link here in my, in the notes right below the video. Don't forget to read below the video. There's a lot of information there. It usually just shows a few sentences and then it will say, you know, show more or something like that. So go ahead and click on the show more and a whole bunch of stuff will open up to you with links, information, uh, measurements, recipes, whatever you may need pertaining to this video. So within that, I will have the link that gives you all of the fabric requirements because in the book, I did 32 scrappy blocks and turned each one into a scrappy quilt. For the sew along, we are doing just one, a few of them, maybe two, like the butterflies, of each block and putting them into a sampler. So that's what this is. Obviously, you will need the book, but that's what this is. It shows you how, you know, to put the blocks together to make this quilt. And so this tulip right here is my patchwork tulip um, that I designed several years ago and put in my scrappy project planner. And all six of those quilts that were in my Scrappy Project Planner, which is no longer available, are now in this book. So this is one of them, the patchwork tulip. And so what I've been doing is this is done with three and a half inch squares. Okay, so I just grabbed my three and a half inch square stash and picked six red squares for this one that I thought went well together. And then I just went up to like my five inch stash or my seven inch strip stash to cut the leaves because they're bigger than three and a half inch squares and they're cut into rectangles. But as I've been doing with the squares, I've been showing you different sizes. So this recipe for this, this pattern and the quilt is in the book and I'll show you that. But these, these tulips right here, I did with one and a half inch squares. So you can see the comparison from three and a half to one and a half and how cute those are. So you can just pull six scrappy aquas or you can do them totally scrappy like I did in the quilt. And, um, you know, it just shows you that you can just use all of your squares. You don't have to pull all your aquas. And then I went ahead and did one with, with two and a half inch squares. Okay, so these are the one and a half inch square tulips and I'm talking about the tops. And this is the two and a half inch squares, okay? And let me just fan those like a deck of cards. <laughs> and that there's a three and a half inch square. And I thought it would be really fun to bump up and do a tulip with four and a half inch squares. Wouldn't that be cute? And so you could do all of these in the same setting as the quilt in the book. You would just have either a tiny cute little quilt, which might be really fun for a little sewing mat or a doll quilt, or just a wall quilt. I love little quilts for the wall. And this one would turn like into a baby quilt, okay, if you use the same setting. And this one would be much larger. And then this one right here in the book, let's turn to that, and I'll show you what size that is. Let's see, I know it's, okay, 168. Let's turn to 168. We talked about the flag quilt last time. Okay, so here is the tulip block pattern with three and a half inch squares, and then here is the quilt, okay? And 
it measures at 56 by 68. So it's kind of just a little small lac quilt or a cute wall quilt for a wall for a uh, I just thought it would be kind of fun for a teen girl's bedroom, for your granddaughter, daughter, something like that. And it was really fun to put it on the dark fabric. So it's a very simple setting, okay, just four by four. But because they're rectangle blocks, of course, it doesn't turn into a square quilt being four by four. And then I just simply did sashing in between and did a border. So you could do that, um, you know, obviously that's the pattern there, but you could do that with this and just do bigger borders and sashings and you would end up with a larger quilt and then on down. So I just think that's fun and I'll show you the quilt later up close and personal of, you know, when we're finished with this. But what I did, let me just set that there, set those there. What I did was I went ahead and cut another two and a half inch um, block to show you. Now the two and a half inch block finishes I guess I should have told you the finish size this finishes at six by eight okay so here's the other that's what this pink one is going to finish at six by eight so right now it measures six and a half by eight and a half these measure three by four so right now they measure three and a half by four and a half and this big one this one in the book measures nine by twelve finished and then this measures 12 across by 16 down. Okay, so right now I'm finished. It measures 12 and a half by 16 and a half. Okay, and it was really fun to just pull six denims. It's really fun when you have your square bins and you know, you've seen my square bins. I've shown you pictures of them many times and pulled them into my videos. And so I just wanna sh uh, show you how fun and easy this block is to do. And so all you do, is lay your, lay your pieces out in order that you may want them, okay? And this square right here is going to take two easy corner triangles. And what I mean by that is, see, it's gonna take one here and one here. The rest of these blocks, there's only one square right here that doesn't have any easy corner triangles. So I start out with this one. So I know the first one I start out with after I laid them out and I like the arrangement, I'm going to put two on. The rest on the outside ones, I'm just going to put one on. And it doesn't matter You can which corner you put it on. You can just turn it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do first. Um, this one is going to be first, so it's going to remind me. And I'm just going to lay that out. And I'm going to start sewing in the corner and then follow this center line. Now, this is my pink featherweight. I've heard a lot of people talk about and ask me what the name of my pink featherweight is. And I know there was a big picture going around saying, does anybody know the name of this pink featherweight? Actually, that was not a photo of my pink featherweight. It was a photo of Cassidy's. Uh, Carrie, my husband, painted that for her years and years ago. And that was a picture of hers. And I used it in my very first book in the photo shoot for Quilty Fun. This is my pink featherweight. She is named Miss Millie after my grandma, whose name was Mildred, and we everyone called her Millie. Of course, I called her grandma. <laughs> and so she's the one who taught me to quilt. And so this pink one, which was one of her favorite colors, she had a pink living room, pink in her kitchen. She just had, a, she had a pink bathroom. Huh, Cass, every, she had pink everywhere all in her house. And so I decided that I needed a pink featherweight to name after my grandma, Millie. Okay, so I'm just following the corners. Here, that corner on this center red line of my Seam So Easy guide. And now I know that's going to be the first one. And then I'm just going to grab these. I don't know if I can remember the order I put them in, but I guess it doesn't matter, right? Usually I take a picture. But since Cass is using my phone to film me, a picture's not going to do me any good. But uh, while I'm doing this, I hope that... You know, I'm inspiring you to use your leftover squares instead of just taking your leftover fabric and just putting them in a bag or something like that, like I, I explain in my book. That's what I used to do. But then I found, you know, found out that I couldn't find them. I couldn't even remember I had them. And so that's when I started cutting them into usable sizes, um, strips and then squares. So, you know, so that I have both, so that I have things at the ready at any time to do any blocks. So 
so when I was doing all of these blocks, I didn't have to cut for any of the tulips themselves. The only thing I had to cut was just two leaves for each block and a stem. And then of course the background, which isn't much cutting at all. And so I just think that's really fun to be able to shop my stash, you know, be able to cut super quick and have all these colors. Oh, that's the one I was supposed to leave there. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. That's the one I'm going to leave there now. <laughs> Any arrangement is going to be cute. It's just this one right here that I wanted to remember that I needed to put another one on the other side. So what I do is I just trim them right here. I'm going to do all of them, but I just wanted to show you the one step right here. And I press that open, especially um, blocks this small. The one I use is one and a half inch square. My, my three by four blocks, I pressed everything open. And here in my two and a half inch square blocks, which is the six by eight, I pressed everything open. So I'm going to go ahead and trim all these up and press them open. And we're gonna check on the baby and we'll be right back. Okay, so let's remove these clappers and see how nice and flat those are. And they've, so I've got four of the squares with one easy corner triangle. And then over here at the machine, this is the one that I wanted in the center. So I have to add one on one side and press it before I can add the other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the other side. Okay, and let me grab a scrap. I'm normally, I know I say this all the time, but I'm normally sewing in between instead of using scraps. This is what I use while I'm filming, is I'm sewing my bonus quilt. And I have shown you sneak peeks of my bonus quilt that I have going on right now. And I can't wait to show you. I'm gonna do one full episode on that to show you, you know, my uh, all the blocks I have done and the different setting. And that's the one, the nine patch, the checkerboard that I talked about and showed before. I need to roll this. I, I use this seam roller, especially at the seams. And that really helps to open those up and make sure they're nice and open. Because if your seams aren't open all the way, then that means your block is gonna go a little bit smaller or your segments are gonna go a little bit smaller, meaning your block will go a little bit smaller. So, you know, we don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna let that cool. And then let me bring this up here. So here would be the bottom square. So we're just gonna set up the six squares like this. And this one could be the top, maybe, because those easy corner triangles go in right here. And then these will go down on the sides. So I'm sure this is probably completely different of how I had it set up. I could do it the other way. See what I mean? I could bring this down at the bottom, bring this in the middle, and you know, it's gonna make the same, same difference. So when you're sewing these, when you're sewing a bunch for a quilt, just do a bunch with, you know, just one easy corner triangle and leave one plain. And then you can always do one easy corner triangle on this one and then decide which one you want in the center. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna sew those together. So I'm just gonna leave those like that and let's talk about the leaves. So here's the stem. And these two pieces are gonna go on the bottom of the leaves before you can sew the stem on. And these leaves are gonna go like this. They're rectangles, so they're going to be tall and you're gonna have two easy corner triangles and you're gonna do them opposite from each other. So this one I'm gonna sew from here and this one I'm gonna sew like this. And so this is essential to use a design board so you know exactly which direction and you pick them up off the design board and if you just take them off and stack them up, it's so easy to make a mistake. So that's why I developed these design boards years and years ago when I was teaching my beginning piecing classes clear back in the, geez, early 90s. And I found out that my students, that's when they were making the most mistakes. And that's when we make all of the mistakes is after pressing or cutting, we just stack them in a pile. And then, you know, we think we remember how they're going to be sewn together. But as soon as I made a design board for everyone, 
the mistakes really went down and it was fun. And so every time we press, we lay it back out and things like that so that we know what we're doing and we're not using, even though we love our seam rippers because they're cute, that doesn't mean we want to use them all the time, right? So, okay. So now just want to make sure before I trim that that's what they look like. They're opposite from each other. And then I'm just going to go ahead and trim. I could use a rotary cutter, but look how fast it is just to, I don't need to, you know, grab rulers, cutters, or anything like that. I can just grab my scissors. They're sitting right here. I come over here and I press them so that they're nice and flat and I set the seams and then I'm going to press these open as well. It's just nicer when you're putting the block together. Each segment may look just perfectly fine when you're pressing it to one side. But when you're doing small pieces, you always have to remember the reason that you're pressing. You kind of have to think about, um, you know, what seams you might have to put together. And so I just like to press open, which takes a lot of the thinking out. And then the whole block is completely nice and as flat as it can possibly be because all of those seams are open. Uh, I have this question all the time. Does that weaken your seams? No, it does not. I use nice thread. I use Arafil. It's a 100% cotton, which what I always use, I always use natural fibers. Um, and I use a little bit smaller stitch and I just, I don't have a problem with that at all. So while those are cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and just start sewing these together. And when I'm sewing two pieces together like this, I don't like to start on the easy corner triangle. I like to start here. I don't know why, it just seems easier to run over those seams right there. Now you can pin if you'd like, but I'm just going to go for it. And usually I'm not a pinner unless there's a really fussy seam that I'm worried about. But because I cut accurately and sewed my easy corner triangles accurately, I'm going to assume they turn out great. See, that's a perfect perfect meetup right there. Okay, and so I might as well just sew this onto the other side. I find that it's easier to meet up those seams starting from here. And that way, maybe it's because I can see those seams right there and they line up perfectly. And so I don't have to pin. Can you, can you see what I'm talking about? Right there, they just line up. And all I do is just put my finger on it and run it under the presser foot. Okay. And then I'm gonna clip this one off and do the same thing. And then I can press all these seams at the same time and put a one clapper on each segment. By that time, the leaves should be cooled and nice and flat from that clapper. Okay, so I've got these two segments to bring over here. These are nice and flat and open from the seam roller. I'm gonna just put those over there. And then what I'm gonna do here is just start with one seam and kind of finger press it open. Roll, kind of pull a little bit so I know it's nice and flat. Before I put the iron on it, I'm gonna maybe do two at the same time. Forgot to show you the other one to see if it lined up, but see, you can see right here that those, those points lined up perfectly. I especially wanna use the roller on this where there seams. And then this way, maybe I can just use one clapper. Okay, press that side, press that side. I'm gonna use another clapper, not the two previous that I have used because I still think that they're warm. See, they're usually kind of warm. Yeah, this is a warm side. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of weight. Again, I call that quilty physics. I think it's even gonna be flatter, okay? And so I'm gonna wait for that. And then I'm gonna move back over here to my leaves. And so this is what this is what my leaves look like right here, all right? And they go right here. Before we can sew them to the stem, we've got to sew these bottom pieces right here. That's what this is right here. Okay, so that 
just requires an accurate quartering seam. I'm using my Seam So Easy Guide and I just tape it on with my washi tape, which does not leave any residue and it's easily removed. And so if you have to change your bobbin or anything like that, and I usually just tape mine in three places here. This is my Prairie washi tape. I usually do a set of washi tape with every collection. And it's useful for so many things, but I especially love to use it for this. Okay, so that scrap is getting kind of scrappy. It might be time to add a new one. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna see what's going on over here. It's kind of like almost cooking, right? Because you're always checking on it and it's like looking in the oven. Okay, that's nice and flat and I can go ahead and sew those together. So I'm gonna set these over to the machine and sew this together while this is cooling. So what I'm gonna do here is set the seams nice and flat. Once again, I'm gonna use one clapper. I'm gonna open those. I have a lot of clappers because I'm usually sewing a lot of blocks at the same time. And I like to use this whole space right here. Can you span across here so, so they can see this whole, yeah. And so this is the amount of clappers that I have. If you want to know about this ironing board and why I put it on legs so that I can have storage under here, you can read my video about my DIY ironing boards and all about my vintage irons as well that I, that I have and how I found them, how I use them, and why I use them, and the ones that I shop for, the ones that are safe to use. And I always link that video in my Sew Your Stash series as well as I link to my video on how I save my scraps. The whole thing is detailed in my book, but it's nice to watch it too. So now what I'm worried about here is these seams lining up. So you could put a pin in there or you could just hold it. You can put uh, one of my double pins, you know, in there like this. Okay, I'll just show you two ways. But when I, when I do pin, I just like to poke it in there. Okay, I, I have found out years ago again in my classes in patchwork when I was teaching beginning classes, I just don't really enjoy picking up a pin and pinning this way. See, I just feel even though that pin, you know, is as flat as it can go, it's not flat. See how it distorts that? Well, that's normally you're, you're doing that during seams and you've got all these layers and you're trying to do that. So whenever I do pin, I'll show you this. This one's my double pin. So I just poke a pin on each side of the seam allowance. So that's not gonna slip. And normally you don't wanna sew over a pin, but I made these thin enough that you can sew over them. If you're using just a regular pin, then just line up those seams and just poke a pin right there, grab another one, and poke it on the other side. But do not, you know, it doesn't matter how long or short or skinny the pins are themselves because I'm just going to poke it onto those seams so they can't move. Okay, now if you end up do sewing over these, you're just sewing over the tips, but I normally just take those out once I've got it under the presser foot. That presser foot is holding it down and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to slip. Okay, I know that's a lot of talk just about that, but I do get a lot of questions about pinning, not pinning, you know, things like that. And so that's what I do, and that's why those seams lined up perfectly right there, okay? So now I'm going to come over here and just trade off. That's what I'm doing over here. I'm always just trading off back and forth between what I have cooling under here. And I can put the stem on that. And now I can press this. But again, I'm usually chain piecing and I'm usually doing like three blocks at a time or maybe six if they're tiny blocks. Now, this is really important to just kind of get this open right here and use the seam roller. This seam roller is flat, it's not curved. I used to, in the beginning, I had a, a curved one, 
and I found that the curved one kind of distorted my block as I was doing this. The flat one doesn't. It keeps it nice and flat. And then I'll apply the iron to it, and I can go ahead and, you know, I've got plenty of clappers here, so I could just go ahead and put, put one on this half too. And I'm gonna stack them up like quilters, clappers, Jenga, and let that cool. And now over here, here's my stems. I can, I mean, here's my leaves. I can go ahead and do a stem to one side and just a quarter inch seam allowance. Line it up. Again, you can pin if you'd like, but as long as I'm starting there and I know that it all lines up here with this stem, there's no seams to match up and I'm good to go. Now you could press this segment separately if you wanted, or you can just go ahead and add the other side and press them all at once, which I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. These tulips really go together fast. And I always like to just, I don't know why, I always like to do the tulip tops first. And sometimes I'll even sew them first before I even um, pick the green fabric for the leaves. Now you noticed in the quilt that I didn't do all green leaves. You don't have to. I just used a bunch of scraps in that quilt. And so there's our leaves. Okay. So now we're going to bring these over here. I think that had plenty of time to cool. Sometimes I might even bring it over here and press it from the front. And then just put another clapper on it over here because I can't do anything with that until I do something with this, right? So instead of pressing towards the stem, I'm going to continue pressing open so this block has a nice flat look. Use the roller there. Apply that carefully so that I'm not folding any seams. And I'm going to go ahead and again, because I've put heat on these, I might as well put another clapper on those. Let's see what this looks like now. I think that looks great. And I'm just going to set that there and wait for the leaves to cool. And let's see, what else can I say while I'm waiting for that? I don't know, I'm gonna show you the quilt in a minute. I'm gonna, while we're waiting for that to cool, I'm going to talk about my, oh, I know what I can do, I can show you the back. Okay, so talking about seams. See, that's what the back of these blocks look like. And I maybe should have done one where I didn't press open and one where I did so I could show you the difference, but I don't know, I can't bear to do that. But I, I just love these tiny little blocks. Now, um, I have used this block several times to make little mug rugs because they're the perfect size. So I just cut a square because this is three by four. I just cut a four and a half inch square and I put it to the side of it, sew it, and then I just uh, quilt it up and bind it and it makes the cutest little mug rug. So that's fun for gifts. These are also fun little gifts. If you have a quilty friend that lives away, why not just sew up, instead of doing the whole mug rug, why not just sew them up a block and send it in snail mail in a regular envelope? Wouldn't this be a fun little exchange for a little group that you could just literally put in a card, like a fun little card and slip in there and put it in mail? I think that'd be great. Okay. Let's, well, I'll end up showing you the back of that other block, which is the same size, but there we go. There's the black, the back of the six by eight block made with two and a half inch squares that I'm doing right now. Okay, I think we've gabbed enough. Let's go over here. Even though I do like to chat with you, but we do want to get the block done, right? Okay, so here we go. And all we're gonna do is sew these two together and I'm going to start right there at the top 
And I think because I have more seams on the leaf side that I'm gonna start with that. Okay. And again, this is where you would pin if you're a pinner. I'm gonna grab a drink of water real quick. That's what happens when you chat a lot. I've been having fun sewing these tulips because again, I keep saying that, but we are having the longest winter here in Utah and I keep saying that I'm waiting and waiting for spring. I'm still waiting for spring. It snowed yesterday. It's just keep snowing and we are into, what is the date today, Cass? It's April, April whatever. 19th. Yeah, I mean, we're never, I mean, April 19th and it's still winter here. So, you know, I'm sewing, sewing up a little bit of spring and that makes me happy. But I'm an outside person. I really like to be outside. So I want to get my garden going and things like that. And so I'm just impatiently waiting for spring. But in the meantime, I can always sew flowers, right? So there we go. Look how cute. I decided, by the way, to do a pink tulip in honor of pink. Pink everything, right? <laughs> That's here on my sewing table. So I'm going to set this block. And again, I'm going to open it up just enough so that I can get this roller in here and go across to each seam. Make sure it's all the way open. Then I use the tip of my iron, which is one reason why I like these irons. I don't like great big giant irons, and I don't want little teeny teeny ones either because, you know, these vintage irons just seem to have the right tip on them and the right weight. They're heavy enough. Okay, so since this is the end of my block, meaning I don't, I'm just pressing it, I like to just press everything, get it nice and flat, and then I like to put clappers across the whole thing. So I'm gonna put one there, I'm gonna put one there, probably slide these down, and put one there across that seam. And then I'm gonna stack my leftovers for the weight of it right there. Okay, so while that is cooling, let's talk about um, next filming for the sew along. So let's see, well, let's just look in the, so we're going in order, okay? That's a picture of the, see that closet right there with my sign that says cotton? Here's a picture of what it looks like on the inside of that closet. And in here are my baskets full of strips. So I have my one and a half, my two and a half, my three and a half, and my five inches and my seven inches. And of course, seven inches are bigger, so I always have more baskets and taller. And then these baskets are all color coordinated. So I know I have like my reds together, my pinks together, my yellows, oranges, grays, these are like low volume down here, my aquas, mints, everything like that. They are fat quarter or larger in here. Now, of course, I have larger cuts of fabric. I'm a fabric designer, so I have bolts of fabric. And so I don't keep the bolts here in my sewing room because I just don't have a large enough sewing room. But I don't need the bolts until I'm doing a border or something like that, and then I'll go grab them but and choose. But in the meantime, I have... You can't believe how much fabric I have in this closet that is just at hand. I can do anything. So I do mostly everything here with these baskets right here. I have them on my cutting table that's right here where I cut right here over by my yarn wall. I have uh, my mat sitting right there and that's where I do my cutting. And um, I've got this big ironing board right here set up next to it. So I usually have my iron on, my cutting right there and I have all of these baskets laying out on my counter and I just grab from them and I can just cut super fast. Okay, so that's what my baskets look like top view, all the different sizes. And this is where I tell you all about my stash in the book and how I use it. Okay, back to why we opened the book in the first place. All right, so we are at the Patchwork Tulip so our block for next week is the Quick Broken Dishes, which I've already done a tutorial on. And in fact, this is where this sewing mat right here, this is the Quick Broken Dishes block right here. I did them in one and a half inch squares. I did them in two and a half inch squares. And I ended up using this little doll quilt um, 
or sewing mat, AKA I always switch them back and forth. In fact, I, I've been using this for a long time. I need to switch it into one of my other quilts. So I've already done the tutorial on that. I've already done the quick dash. We talked about 64 in my checkerboard. And so my next one is in May and that's the spring baskets. And I remembered it's in May because we've got the schedule right here. And so spring baskets will be um, May 15th. So that's when I'll be doing the next and the last tutorial out of this book because I've already done the tall pine ones in the Sew Your Stash series. I've already done the toy sewing machine. And so that means after this week and after the spring basket in May, I will have finished all every tutorial for every block in this book. Now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna film until May. I'll be showing you other things. I'll be continuing my Sew Your Stash series. I will be doing, you know, floss tube. I'll be doing some more crochet videos. But this scrappiness is happiness is really what has kept me, you know, busy filming right now. And I've had fun doing it. I always love to show you how to sew scraps. And I mean, how to save scraps, sorry. And then how to sew them into really fun blocks. Simple blocks, picture blocks. This tulip is what I would call a picture block because... It's an object. Okay, there we go. Look how cute that pink tulip is. Let's stick it on a design board. I'll take pictures of all these sizes together and so that I can put it in the opening of the video. But here we go. We've got two little ones and two using the two and a half inch squares. And uh, what I did for my leaves is I just grabbed all of, and within my bins, I just keep them in um, color order. So I just went into my seven and a half inch bins of greens and just pulled the stack out and that's where I cut those from. And I probably used, I think I used my seven and a half for that too. And so like I've shown you before, when you go to cut these, I know I've cut it out of a, two of them out of a seven and a half inch strip. Whatever leftovers I have from that strip, if I still have a long enough strip, I put it back in the basket. If I just have a little bit left, then I'll cut it into squares and put them in, you know, the largest squares that I can according to what I keep and put those in my square bin. And I'm always sewing scrappy, you know, scrappy blocks, but I'm always replenishing as well and my squares. So it seems like I'm never running out. I had a lot of red and I showed you in my last video how I sewed a lot of my red ones, my one and a half inch squares into using it into a flag. So let me set these over here. And let me set Miss Millie down here. And I'm gonna turn my switch off. That means my iron's off, my everything is off so that I can pull this quilt in here. And we can talk about using darker backgrounds. Now, this is a dark linen. This is 100% linen, I believe. Well, it, it is linen. I haven't looked at the content, but it's Riley Blake linen. Okay, whenever I sew with linen, I like to pre-wash it. And I usually don't pre-wash my other fabrics. They're such good quality, I don't ever have to worry about that. But with linen, because linen is may shrink at a different weight rate than the cotton, I went ahead and pre-washed it, but I really didn't notice that much shrinking. And so, as I'm talking to you, as a quilter, I always have to pull out threads, right? But look how, this is a Baptist swirl. Can you see that quilting? And because the background is dark, it's just a gray. Uh, my friend Julie quilted this. It's just a gray. It's not quite as dark as this, but you can see that it doesn't look funny running over all of these. So you can see this is a blue one with traditional green. This is a different, this is aqua leaves. This is denim, but I wanted to show you that I did do some patchwork blocks in here as well. And because, you know, look at all those threads that sticks to this, but I did patchwork. So you can just use any squares that you want. And I just love this linen and it comes in several colors. I'd like to do a few more colors with Riley Blake. I need to talk to them about that. And I did a scrappy binding because, you know, when I was cutting these, I just cut some scraps and I, I talk about in the book how to do that. 
And I used this green again for the back of this quilt just because I thought it was bright and fun and went against this this um, char. I need to find out the name. I shouldn't say find out. I want to call it charcoal or I want to call it dark gray. But it is the darkest gray of linen of Riley Blake. Okay, so I think we've talked all about tulips, right? And how fun they are. You can see how easy they are to make in all different sizes. And I really, really hope that I've inspired you to make a few tulips for spring. Maybe do a fun little exchange with your friends or your quilting group. Um, your online quilting group would be really fun to just write a little note and send them a little block and just using your scraps. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all of your kind comments. I appreciate them and they keep me going. You're um, subscribing to my channel. Uh, helps me to keep going and to bring you more content and I just have fun you know filming and talking to you and I hope that you enjoy my videos please leave me comments let me know how you like this block I will leave the recipe to these other blocks not the one that's in the book but I will leave the recipe because you need the leaves cutting and everything I know you know the size squares but you need the leaf cutting for each one and so within this video description, like I told you, push the button that says show more and you can see all of the links that I'm talking about and you can see the recipes for these blocks. And so I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have uh, a grateful day because there's always something to be grateful for, right? And I hope there's spring coming your way and I hope there's spring coming my way and I'll chat with you later.